education, computing and much more. From short courses to masters, work hard and thrive with a flexible learning experience designed to suit you. Apply now at atu.ie slash flexible. ATU, develop the skills you need to stand out. Now is the time to experience all-electric driving for yourself with the Volkswagen Experience Electric Sales Event from the 9th to the 17th of June at your local Volkswagen retailer. Discover our all-electric cars, charging solutions, government incentives and our latest market-leading 232 offers. Plus, test drive the Volkswagen ID range, Ireland's best-selling all-electric cars. Available for immediate delivery at your local Volkswagen retailer. Search Volkswagen ID. Volkswagen. Best-selling claim based on latest published figures. Off the ball. This is News Talk. You ain't shit. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. My fans can be the harshest critics, you know. And they often are. A wife is often the harshest critic of her husband. <laughs> I thought I was invincible. That's what you're, you're trained to believe as a sports person. There was four million people in Ireland who knew much more about managing <laughs> football teams than I did. When it comes to music, I can spoof for the best. Your sporting career is the best time you'll have, and, you know, you have to hang on to it for as long as you like, because everything else is pretty crappy. And this is not like Stephen Rochford has never spoken to Jimmy McGill in his life. And this is Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk with John Duggan until five. Just to bring up to speed on the Electric Ireland All Ireland Minor Football Quarter Final, it is Cork 110, Dublin 7 points. And we kind of refer to the great writing on the hurling finals tomorrow in the papers in the Irish Independent, Vincent Hogan and Caroline Curd, and the job that's been done in Limerick, and also with the had brilliant kind of journey piece uh, from Dennis Walsh in the Irish Times on Clare over the last 25 years since their last Munster uh, title win. So the Munster final, first up with the Gaelic Grands tomorrow between Limerick and Clare, throwing at 145 and then Kilkenny Galway contest the Leinster decider at four at Croke Park joining us now to look ahead on the radio former All-Ireland winning captains of Tipperary and Kilkenny respectively Owen Kelly and Brian Hogan and the ex-Limerick player and manager TJ Ryan Owen, Brian and TJ good afternoon Hi John, John how are you? Hope you're all well and uh, great to speak to you. And if you have any questions, folks, for the panel, general comments as well, you can text us 53106 at the cost of 30 cents. We're also streaming this conversation so you can listen on News Talk around the country, but also watch us if you'd like on the Off the Ball digital and social channels on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. Brian, Hurling has stood up. I think it's been a great championship so far, hasn't it? Uh, it's been outstanding and I suppose I'll have to give it to uh, the two boys and obviously the Munster Championship has been flying the flag up to now. Um, I said I get my spake in early before they, they, they start go, crowing about it but it's been a, it's been a great summer so far John um, we've had some epic uh, matches to date and I think the uh, I, 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 I have no doubt the Munster final and I'm hoping the, the Leinster final will, will follow suit I'm expecting two two massive matches this weekend TJ has been a tough week down in Cork in Cork GA with the passing of Teddy McCarthy his funeral has been taking place today uh, Billy Morgan Con Murphy Larry Tompkins Tomas Mulcahy Niall Cahalan and Jimmy Barry Murphy carried his coffin into the church uh, you've had dual players in Limerick but it's hard to see Teddy's achievement ever being repeated 1990 won the hurling and the football uh, titles on the field to play and uh, a lot of love for Teddy and his family this week absolutely iconic figure in the GA, like what he's done I definitely agree with John it won't be done again um, uh, like coaches wouldn't allow it I think John in the modern era um, his fielding will definitely be remembered as one of the best fielders and that skill is maybe looks easier than it actually is the timing required there to get off the ground and in some of the pictures that you've seen and maybe on social media the height that he was off the ground given his kind of obviously his strength and power in his legs and then there's such a the skill to go with it yeah, just just one of those characters I think he played maybe in 94 John against Limerick when I was coming on the scene I don't really remember much of it but uh, just an, an iconic figure throughout the country now I'd say there isn't a corner in the place that wouldn't know Teddy McCarthy be it from a footballer hurling and agreed his feat of winning two all Ireland in the same year will never be repeated I know when we really see the GA at its best don't we at this time uh, in these sad times yeah you do I suppose you see the pictures on the examiner today Tipperary players around that era you know they met in the 87, 88 1990, 91 monster finals you know and like Teddy McCarthy, what do I remember him? I suppose when you were a kid in the backyard or in the back garden, when you were jumping for a high ball, you were Teddy McCarthy and you were nearly fighting with your your, your buddies and your mates over, no, I'm Teddy McCarthy, I caught that high ball. That's the legacy he leaves. And I think he just said his feet there was unbelievable, you know. 
to All Ireland in, in, in the space of maybe two weeks and that hurling and football. But you know, I suppose I wanted to put an and that like you, you see the height of respect they have for him at the funeral. Um, or the pictures coming out in the papers the last couple of days and you know that Cork Tipperary rivalry back those times is similar to what we have now between Clare and Limerick at the Monster Championship and look just shows what the GA is all about May he rest in peace uh, very sad uh, news and uh, our thoughts are with Teddy McCarthy's family uh, on this sad day so when you've uh, been in uh, down in Waterford working with Davey the last while yeah, different experience, John. Um, I'd love to say that uh, every day was like the last day out against Tipperary, but not to be, you know, it just shows the, the Monster Championship, the bear pit that you're in, like, you know, the first day out against Limerick, I suppose, Walter, very unlucky. Not that day to come away with a win, Limerick down to 14, and maybe, you know, the experience of getting over the line against Limerick is a thing that maybe holds back uh, some teams, just getting in front and being in front, and Walter definitely feel, you know, we feel we had chances that day, and you know, then I suppose a poor maybe 35 per minutes performances in the next two games and you find yourself you're out of the Monster Championship and that's the way it is right up I suppose to the last puck of the ball you had Tip and Cork maybe vying for the last spot too so it's uh, it's an unforgivable championship and um, you just have to be on the on the money all day every day and you can't even have a lapse for maybe 30 or 35 minutes and ultimately that probably cost Waterford but you know, a different experience and something I really enjoyed and you know, a fabulous bunch of players in, in Waterford and anything they were asked of with Davy and the management team during the year, they definitely put their, their front foot forward. And look, I think you find that with most inter-county teams. That's my first time experience in a different county now that they're definitely inter-county hurlers. They just want to play. And that's the thing. And you'd only love to be playing this time of the year. But the weather's so good, you'd love the ball hopping and that. So, you know, it's, it's an unforgiving championship, as I said. It's probably something I, I'd like to see Look, that, that there's not the week gap between games. I think we need a two-week gap between games just to give players a chance to recover mentally and physically. And hopefully that might be something that might, might be reviewed down the road. Yeah, it was important to get that win, wasn't it, against Tipperary? Just to finish on a positive note. I think it was. Look, it's the effort that players put in. And TJ and, and Brian will know that there. Like, and when you're not getting the results, it's, it's a hard place to be. But you no, know, when you know a squad has potential and are not reaching their maximum performance, that's the disappointing thing, like... You know, so when they did perform like they can the last day, I think that's um, not a small bit of, uh, bit of pleasure, but ultimately you want to come through the Monster Championship and that's the, the disappointment for both Waterford and Cork. They find themselves looking in, looking on now from, from the, the outset and, uh, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, I suppose, really, for all those players involved. Yeah, heartbreaking. How do you deal with the noise? Because there's got to be noise, isn't there, Owen, if, if, you're, if it's not going too well? Yeah, there is, yeah. Look, I suppose you learn to, to shut out from it and that, do you know what I mean? And especially, you just stay involved with the group that you're involved with, that dress room, the backroom team, and, you know, you just you just back each other up. That's the thing with it. And, you know, that's an experience too, even how to deal with it and that. So, look, ultimately, I suppose only one team is going to win the All-Ireland this year um, in, in, in the middle of July, and everyone else then will have failed in some capacity. So, look, it's cutthroat business, and it's... Uh, it's a winner's take all in the in the hurling championship and I suppose that's why we love it and that's why we love being involved in it. Before we move on from this, are you enjoying working with Davy? Yeah, he's interesting. Um do you know what? He he thinks about the game unbelievably. Um I suppose people looking on from the outside think that they just see this guy that's maybe a small bit mad and roaring and balling and shout, but I think he's he's far from and you know, to listen to his knowledge of the game, it's incredible, like, you know, and I suppose look I've worked with Liam Sheedy, a former all and winning manager, double winning manager, and Davey, an all and winning manager. So it's nice to pick up the experience of, of Davey and um, having picked it up off Liam before. It was great learning with, with both. And uh, look, there, he's, a, he's a hurling man, true and true Davey. And, you know what I mean? I think he just, he just loves the game and can't stay away from it. And he'll be back again. How are they going down in Kilkenny then, Brian? Um, <clears throat> it's all quiet, John, uh, which is usually the way we like it. Um the lads were away in a training weekend last weekend and um, as I've said normally that means that you know they usually come back from that fairly focused or you know I think most teams now tend to fall into that pattern but certainly from my experience you know you knew you were coming to the business end of the season when you were heading to uh, wherever it was Carden House or Fota or wherever these you know um, you know we've we've ob- we obviously had a couple of injuries coming out of the Wexford match which I think most are, are all clear now aside from unfortunately Adrian Mullen uh, was a serious uh, serious uh, injury but the rest of the guys seem to be fit and ready and uh, yeah like it's 
you know, we're going for four in a row um, in Leinster, having, I suppose, you know, in some quarters, the, the, the conversation around transition and, you know, it's obviously Derek's first season now and, and all this kind of talk. But yet we're still we're still we're still heading up, you know, with, with, with the possibility of winning winning a fourth Leinster title in a row. And um, I think I think Adrian aside, we're we're you know we're in as good a position as we can be. But you know, realistically, I suppose we've the, the Leinster Championship is kind of all roads have kind of led to this point. You know, I think there was a sense of inevitability really about the fact that it was going to be most likely going to be Kilkenny and Galway in the, in the final, and that's the way it's kind of panned out. So. I think you know Sunday is a big test for us. You know, I think the the the, the last time really the lads were, were 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 put under severe pressure was the was the league final against Limerick down in Parky Cueve, and uh, you know it didn't go obviously the plan, but I think they would have learned a lot from that. It was a it was a you know it was a a steep learning curve. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. I, I kind of I'm hoping it'll be a a cracker. You know, this time last year Galway didn't really kind of show up as we'd expected you know we, we click any one comfortably enough even probably more comfortable than the five points would suggest so I think you know from that perspective I, I, I'd expect Galway to, to, to front up big time on Sunday and uh, yeah and then we'll, we'll see where it takes us from there So are there any more of these intense training sessions in Nolan Park that, that uh, was the the what was what we just call it the, the legend of the Cody era and for Derek <laughs> Ling's doing his own thing yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Derek is doing. Look, I, I, the championship is in a different format now. I suppose with, with with the time we had between matches back then, it kind of lent itself to to having those kind of uh, those matches. And and I, I think it, it was it was key for us at that time to try and keep the intensity at a certain level to prepare us for, say, when we go out against the likes of Owen and the lads or or, or any of the other you know teams. With the matches coming thick and fast, you know, and now with the current condensed championship, I think the opportunities to have those kind of, you know, real intense in, internal matches are probably few and far between. Um, I think they had, they had, you know, 40 minute match themselves last weekend, you know, and uh, I think, you know, that that probably was, was it really, you know, in terms of what they could have done in terms of a, at a high level. Uh, after that, really, it's just kind of making sure that the bodies are fit and, and are refining kind of, I suppose, some of the, the uh, the tactics that they want to implement really. You could reel off the household names, Brian, in the uh, Cody era in the, in the great you know yourself, uh, T, um, TJ, who's still there, obviously Henry, Tommy, mm-hmm. JJ, Eddie, Owen, Larkin. Who are going to be the names of the future? Um. Well, look, I suppose the obvious, I mean, name that's been mentioned throughout the, the league has been Billy Drennan. You know, coming off the back of the successful under twenty campaign last year and. You know he, he's a he's a natural scoring forward and 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 Derek handed him the the free take and responsibilities during the national league. Um, he's still very young and I think you know he, he, league is league and championship is a different animal altogether. And I think you know uh, I'd imagine what they'll experience on Sunday will be will be a step up from anything that they've, 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 he's experienced so far. But again, you know it's 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 a, it's a learning path. It's a development. You know I think if he can hold his own, he's one certainly we're hoping. Will 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 step up. I think, you know, Owen Cody. He's been there for the last few years, but I think he's he, he's he's kind of stepped up a level now. I think he's taken on that kind of leadership role. You know, maybe where it has been TJ that's leading the line for the last the last number of years. You know, last ten years, really realistically. You know, I think, you know, uh, age and, and that kind of thing. He can't be expected to carry the load he was doing. I think Owen is starting to step into that into that into that um, frame now and kind of you know as the focal point of the attack. Then you've got the other guys, you know, like Derek was obviously over the under 20, so he knows what's out there better than anyone. You know, he would have been managing a lot of those guys for the last few years. Um, you've obviously got David Blanchfield there, who was came on as a sub last year in Northern Ireland, has been pretty cons- uh, you know, consistent in terms of being in the team this year. So it's a big year for him as well to kind of really nail down that place. Um, so yeah, I suppose there, there are a couple of guys you're looking for, but you know, the, I think the nature of the, 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 uh, the championship nowadays, you know, the hurling championship, it's it does take players, you know, that couple of years really to kind of bed in. You know, it's it's really the, the exceptional player that comes in year one or year two and, and just sits in fits in seamlessly. You know, you see that let's say with Limerick and Cotton O'Neill, and you know he's he's come in and made a big impact. Plus, taking him a few years as well, and he's been arguably the standout, you know, under twenty player for the last few years. You know, so. Um, yeah, there would be, I suppose, two, you know, two or three players that, from a Kilkenny perspective, that we're looking to 
over the next year or two to really kind of you know um, step up TJ, when Henry Sheffield went into Galway, there was a huge amount of excitement about it because, in my opinion, he's the greatest hurler of all time. And obviously, people have different views on that kind of thing. But um, you also had uh, managers of other counties go into Galway in the past Babs Keating, Ger Nan, um, Shane O'Neill in recent years. You'd have to say Galway, in terms of the return, have under uh, delivered in terms of All Ireland's won in 2017 since 1988. Um, is the pressure slightly ratcheting up on Henry now? Because they, they've been pretty poor so far in the round robin, you'd have to say, and they need to win a trophy. Um, I think so. I, I, there is definitely pressure tomorrow to win a trophy. Henry himself, uh, being the winner that he is, would like to win a trophy. The record in Crow Park as well, John, hasn't been brilliant since that Ireland win. I think they've only won one game. So they'll want to write that. Um, the Leinster Championship form to date, I couldn't be getting too carried away about it. There was a certain inevitability about, as Brian said there, that these two teams were going to beat the final. What I really liked about Galway the last day, John, was they, they were in a hole. Uh, things didn't go well for them they conceded two soft goals against Dublin uh, they were 12 points on 10 points down at half time I just think the, the fight they showed to get back and lead that game and get a, get a result and get themselves to a Leinster final I like that in a team that when things aren't going well that you fix it and now they can drive on but I do think from both managers point of view there is pressure like Derek in his first year won't want to lose another final after the league final and Henry would definitely like to put silverware on the table so pressure both sides and you know I'm expecting two teams to go at this really really hard from the start and just really want to win the game great prize in a trophy and another great prize in that semi-final place and momentum so a lot of stake tomorrow in the Leinster final Owen Kelly when teams start so poorly as Galway did against uh, say Kilkenny in Dublin the last day why is that why, why, why can't a team not just hit the pitch at the start of a game yeah that's the million dollar question John and anyone involved in management would, would love to know the the, the real answer to that you know I suppose it's prep um, you know, sometimes it can be the warm up maybe it can be the bus journey it can be the hotel and when you don't start well you revisit it and you say right what did we not do right you get feedback from your players you get feedback from your, your backroom team to see you know were we there too early in the hotel were we there too early in the dressing room all that comes into play when you don't start well it, you look into the warm up that's just what you try to improve on but sometimes it, it can be can be nerves like but for God we playing Dublin the last day you wouldn't put nerves maybe into maybe it was actually the complacency that you know traditionally obviously Galway have performed well against Dublin and you probably thought maybe that looked at just navigate their way through the win and then on to a Leinster final and I think the lads have touched on it this is where they, they wanted to be Galway so I don't think any team will start poorly now on, on Sunday either Kilkenny or Galway wait to see I think both of them will hit the ground run and get the scores on the board not uh, miss those opportunities that, that, that are created even Galway had a fierce mishap at the back the last day between the goalkeeper and the full back and that and I think all those things will be will be eliminated you know there'll be about 20,000 maybe 24 to 5,000 there lads will be concentrated concentration levels will be higher and I think you'll see a better performance from, from players all around and you know I look it's going to be an interesting game um, Dolby and Kilkenny always throw up crackers of games look I think the Leinster Championship needs that Hurling probably needs it as well you know and look I think Joe Canning even said in his article during the week that he'd rather this game maybe wasn't in Croke Park I'd probably be in favour of that too just from an atmosphere point of view but look that's uh, that's another day's uh, chat but I, I, I think both teams will start well on Sunday and you'll, you'll see a good game then How are you calling it on? I just fancy Kilkenny to get over the line um, and it's just similar to last year when they played Clare in the Ireland semi-final it was Clare's first time in, in Croke Park and that and Kilkenny just know how to win and Croke Park is the second home for these guys and Ballyhale boys have won more club all Ireland there in the last couple of years than, than any team and they, they have a lot of great feelings in, in Croke Park and I think Owen Cody needs to hit form he definitely needs to hit form now tomorrow um, subs coming off the bench is probably a thing you know if Cahill Mannion can go back to the form he's in and I don't know is he carrying an injury or two he can be a threat for a goal but I just think Kilkenny somehow will go, get over the line and I wouldn't be surprised if this went into ex extra time um, now the only thing if it goes into extra time I'd worry maybe for Kilkenny with the, the subs coming off a bit like Cork in the other semi-final a couple of years ago but I fancy Kilkenny just to get over the line I think to take great pride in that it's the Leinster final and Brian will know more than this and that iconic team is coming in to bring that that Bob O'Keefe cup away from, from Leinster and I think that's something I've, I've heard in the past with Brian Cody that he doesn't want that uh, uh, to happen when, and, and neither will Derek Ling I'm sure and then click anybody's Brian are you confident? Yeah I am John uh, 
I think, look, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount in it. And, and like Owen has said, I think we, we need and we, we, we expect a cracker of a match in the Leinster final um, on Sunday. You know, we've, uh, well, certainly I've, I've, I've said on s- several occasions, like the Galway tick all the boxes in terms of what you're looking for for a genuine contender in terms of the size of their team, the athleticism, the hurling, etc. But a lot of the time, you know, if for whatever reason, they, you know, in the big matches, in case in point, the Leinster final last year, they've, they've, they've kind of tended to be flat at key points and uh, you know as TJ's mentioned the record in Crow Park isn't, isn't wonderful you know and I think you need a level of consistency if you're going to be a genuine contender whereas with the lads and with Kenny you kind of know what you're going to get you know regardless of the, you know the day when you go up to Crow Park you, they'll, they'll leave everything out there and I, 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 I'm backing the lads even despite the fact they're missing Adrian I think he'll be a huge loss um, I still think uh, Derek will have the lads ready and we, we'll get the win TJ how are you calling this one and why? Yeah, I'm going to go to Galway Road. Um, I think Adrian Mullins a massive loss. He's been a huge scoring player for Kikenny over the last couple of seasons. I like the pieces of Galway's play in the game in Nolan Park. It looked like at times as if they were going to take off. They're starting to get better ball to their forwards. And as I said, I just like the way they turned it around the last day. They obviously, they went and fixed it at half time. I think Henry will want to win this one in a major way, just kind of just to prove that as a manager, he can do it as well as a player. And I think they're going to get a result here and put themselves in the semi finals of Galway for me. What's it like uh, looking on the outside now, Owen, as a, a temporary man, uh, the way Liam Cahill's uh, run the shop? Obviously, they're into the All-Ireland series. They'll probably be a bit under the radar. Uh, there's been so uh, little between Tipperary and the other counties and Munster. So you must be an interested observer. Yeah, I, I've liked to look at Tipperary this year from the league right through to the Munster Championship. OK, the last day against Waterford, they seem to be below power, we'll say. Um, you know, Tipperary probably have got what most managers kind of want is a break. So they have a rest. They have awfully next week, so that'll be three weeks since their last match. If they win that game, which I expect them to win, there'll be another two two weeks for quarter final. And it gives them a chance to get their injuries back. Jason Ford, Jake Morris, big losses. So I know they would love to be in a monster final. Why not? Every player wants to play in a monster final. It's a prestigious day, a prestigious medal to, to get your hands on. But it might have worked out in their favour. And I think a couple of injuries, rumour has that Craig Morgan is coming back into the fray as well in trend and that and I just think and it's no different than any team that wins tomorrow right you'll have the silver in the rest of the world. you have a couple of weeks to rest and recover and it's crucial and you know like Tipperary for me were one of the most consistent teams all through the through the champion, uh, the league and the championship and I, I really like the look of them and I think they, they could give um, they could give this all Ireland championship a, a, a right rattle um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they get to the latter stages of it very good. Owen Kelly, TJ Ryan and Brian Hogan on the Saturday panel looking ahead to the Leinster and Munster finals. You want to get in touch with a question or a comment 53106 at a cost of 30 cent in the Electric Ireland Minor Football Championship quarter final at the All-Ireland stage. Cork 111, Dublin 10 points at Nolan Park after 34 minutes. We're back after the break with the panel. Uh, we're looking ahead to Limerick against Clare tomorrow and also maybe talking about the debate sparked by Martin Brehany during the week in the uh, Irish Independent about GA players maybe not being allowed to, to show that they can let their hair down during the season so we'll come back to that after two after the news on the Saturday panel here on Off The Ball The Saturday panel on Off The Ball Follow at Newstalk FM on Instagram for the latest videos from our presenters reporters and team behind the scenes News Talk Conversation that counts Harvey Norman, your home of Miele. Shop our range of Miele products in store and online, like the Miele Single Oven with Pyrolytic Cleaning, just one five nine nine, or the matching Miele Combi Microwave Oven, now one eight seven nine. Buy both products and get a free Miele C three Complete Vacuum Cleaner worth three hundred euro, and with up to thirty six months interest free finance terms available, delivery and install and free recycling. Why shop anywhere else? The Harvey Norman Big Sale is now on. Don't miss out. No. Here, what's the story with Ruth and her zero alcohol beer? Maybe she's doing dry January. She's a bit late. <laughs> Could be on antibiotics. I'm not sure Ruth is fit as a fiddle. Um, maybe she has an important fiddle recital? No, that was last week. It wasn't bad, actually. Got the car with you tonight, Ruth? No, I don't. You never need a reason to enjoy a great tasting beer. Heineken Zero. Zero explanation needed. 
Taste of Dublin returns for 2023 to Dublin's beautiful Ivy Gardens this June 15th to 18th. Experience Ireland's best chefs, hottest restaurants, culinary masterclasses, artisan producers and incredible live entertainment. The ultimate fun foodie day out this summer. Book your tickets now at tasteofdublin.ie. Booking fees apply. Share, stream, download and connect more with Ireland's best value 5G prepay offer on Air Mobile. For just €20 Euro top up, you can get no limits data, unlimited calls, unlimited texts, and 5G at no extra cost, meaning you can connect faster, stronger, and better than before. Now that's a no brainer. To switch to Air Mobile, go in store or visit air.ie. Subject to €20 Euro top up every 28 days. Fair usage applies. For full terms, see air.ie. We are the Pet Show Boys. One of the most successful acts in music history. Pet Shop Boys. Bring Dream World, the greatest hits live tour, to 3 Arena Dublin on June 19th. Tickets from 82.05. On sale now from Ticketmaster.ie. Additional charges may apply. Pet Shop Boys. Dream World, the greatest hits live. Tickets on sale now. Looking for a memorable getaway? Look no further. This summer, live the moment at Castleknock Hotel. Immerse yourself in our stylish rooms. Unwind by the pool. Savor mouth-watering cuisine at our award-winning restaurant. Or embrace the lively ambience of our two sun-filled patios. And when it's time to explore, our prime location puts you right in the heart of the action. Explore more at castleknockhotel.com. Tired of forking out for fuel? Had enough of packed trains and buses? Then an electric bike from Eurocycles.com could be all you need. Want to explore Ireland's new greenways the easy way? At Eurocycles.com, we have a huge range of e-bikes from the biggest brands like Scott, Rally and Bergamont. So, if you're wondering, can I be electric too? Yes, you can. Drop in for a free test ride today at Eurocycles Airside Swords and Long Mile Road. Or buy online at Eurocycles.com. Fruit and veg discounts are ripe for the picking at Lidl. Chopped costs with 40% off microwavable baby potatoes, now 59 cent. Don't leave without 44% off Irish butterhead lettuce, now 49 cent. Plus a juicy 20% off our entire frozen fruit range on Lidl Plus. Go on, shop without compromise. Go full Lidl today. T's and C's apply. This radio commercial has been written using artificial intelligence. We input the words electric, affordable, high spec and seven year warranty. This is what came back. The Electric MG range, including the Irish Times Car of the Year, the MG4. And that was it. Not even a catchy slogan. Recharge your soul. CMG.ie Let me explain with Sean Defoe. With the Leaving Cert kicking off this week, we've been looking for your exam disaster stories from forgetting your calculator for the maths exam and having your mother drop in the TV remote to people getting sick right onto their exam papers to speaking French in your Irish oral. You've all been getting in touch and we've compiled them on this week's Let Me Explain podcast, which is available now on the News Talk app, powered by Gold Out or wherever you get your podcasts. On 106 to 108 FM. On the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud and Smart Speaker. This, this is News Talk. It's two o'clock. Good afternoon, my Melon Butler. Demonstrators taking part in a housing protest in Cork City this lunchtime say many young people are not planning their future in Ireland. The organisers of the Raise the Roof rally are calling on the government to fundamentally change its housing and homelessness policy. There are warnings that the crisis is having a huge impact on society and they say any surplus money should be used to immediately create more housing. These demonstrators outlined why they're taking part. I have a five bedroom house. I have a car outside my door. I have a good job. But I had to borrow 100 quid off my daughter this morning because I'm not getting paid till next Wednesday. You know, I'm in a different situation to people that are homeless. But there's a lot of people like me. We have a few people that have emigrated and lots more who are talking about it. It's more that people don't see a future here. So when people are planning their future, they're not planning it for Ireland. They're planning to move away. Concerns remain over the new Sloan Care public-only contract, according to doctors. Just 61 existing consultants have switched over to the new contract since its introduction in March. The contracts come with requirements for weekend and evening work, which has been an issue for doctors' representative groups. Chair of the Irish Medical Organisation, Dr Matthew Sadlier, says the uptake to date is very low. 
we do feel that the process of switching over will take some time just to, you know, the paperwork and the HR logistics of actually doing it. So we wouldn't have expected a, a large number by this stage, but we probably would have expected it, if the, depending on the interest, to be bigger than 61, which is a very low number. A 34-year-old Romanian woman has been remanded in custody on money laundering charges after being arrested last night at Dublin Airport. Diana Maria Popovici, currently of no fixed abode, but with a previous address at Timber Mills, Artain in Dublin, appeared at Dublin District Court today, accused of possessing the proceeds of crime at bank accounts in Dublin and Donegal while using fake IDs. There was no plea and no application for bail, with the woman remanded in a docus centre in Mountjoy Prison to appear in court again on Friday. Finally for now, all roads lead to Slane tonight for Harry Styles. The 80,000 people descending on the County Meath village are reminded that tickets are all online, so ensure your phone is charged, your e-ticket is downloaded and you have a portable charger. People are also being advised to dress for the weather and leave the heels and stilettos at home. Event controller Eamon Fox explains how to access the site. We've got three entrances, so there's a red route, a green route and a blue route. How you get into the concert is determined by where you come from. So that if you're coming on a shuttle from Dublin, you end up on the green route and you come in the green route. You don't meet your friends who've come the other way until they get into the concert. Slane Village is closed to all through traffic and all through pedestrians. So it's open to the village itself, but not for people to wander through it, so that we direct you in through that way. Oh, that's your news at two minutes past two. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Can Rory win the British Open? Support him live in July with Ryanair's daily flights to Liverpool. Warm, humid and cloudy today. Scattered showers too, some turning heavy at times. Top temperatures reaching 19 to 24 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. This is Off The Ball Saturday on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to five. You can text us 53106, tweet us at Off The Ball. We're streaming the conversation as well. You can listen on News Talk across the country. Also watch us if you like on the digital and social channels for Off The Ball on Twitter, YouTube, on Facebook. This is part two of the Saturday panel. We're previewing tomorrow's Leinster and Munster hurling finals with the former All-Ireland winning captains, with Tipperary and Kilkenny respectively, Owen Kelly and Brian Hogan and the ex-Limerick player and manager TJ Ryan. Uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, Patrick Coleman, Tipper lurking, lurking in the background in our series contenders for the All-Ireland. Uh, Shawnee Kay, I think with all the extra games in football and hurting these days, the really big days like Leinster and Munster final days fall under the radar, which is a shame. Uh, 53106, amazing considering the tackling the Limerick players are facing in every match that they just got eight frees in 77 minutes of hurting against Cork, scoring 222 of 325 from play. If that happens again, tomorrow, Clare will win, says Paul. Another one, hurling championship should be top 10 like French rugby. Everyone plays each other the top two semi next four quarter-final last two relegation playoff. Whatever Munster team and Leinster team top after nine games are Munster and Leinster champions. Problem now is this year Cork not playing Galway, Kilkenny, Wexford, Dublin. Imagine Arsenal not playing Man United in a year. It'd be awesome championship, the top ten. TJ, you see the sacred nature of the Munster championship means that'll never, probably never happen. Yeah, the Munster championship, like I said, your, your, your comment there about falling under the radar, I can assure anybody if you're down our way in Limerick and Clare over the last number of days, the excitement is unreal. Huge push for tickets. Um, so everybody wants to be there. And it's a great um, a kind of location for these two teams. You've got one team kind of completely coming from one side. The Gaelic Grounds is practically on the border between Limerick and Clare. Like, so really, really fitting location. Massive atmosphere coming. Nothing between the teams over the last couple of seasons, championship-wise, and something to really look forward to. And Clare, I suppose, maybe winning their own Robin gives them a little bit of an edge in knowing this can be done. Like, But huge battles all over the field. And maybe the name of your show, John, will be interesting tomorrow, off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you can see a bit of physicality, you can TJ? Actually, there is. And in Paris, the Munster Championship this year, all the games, I, I've said already, the atmosphere is back. Um, the whole intensity and the crowds getting behind their teams, the quality of the teams as well, like they've come right up to where Limerick have been at. There's been very, very little between them. We've seen that even with Cork losing out literally by a point, effectively, not, 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 not to qualify. And it's maybe the game as well has changed a little. I think the coaching does a bit, little bit more of maybe the direct ball and you know we've kind of gone away from that crowded middle toward as bad maybe as it was there for a period of time I think there's more direct play there's some brilliant scores and there's players playing at the real top of their game so as I said as a championship 
I think this Munster Championship has been as good as I can remember ever. And I think hopefully the final will, will, will live up to that as well. And I don't have any doubt that it will because, as I said, if you go through the both teams, there's no major surprises. Kind of clear he is back, which we kind of expected that he would be. And the Limerick team is kind of more or less the same. The Lord Hegarty starts this time. He didn't start the own Robin game as we would have expected for his big game mentality. Keane Lynch isn't named in the first 15, but I think that may be because of maybe his couple of injuries that he's picked up. He might, obviously, he's not fully right. They've had two weeks since the last day. But look, everything is in place for these two teams to have another titanic struggle. And like I said, it's fitting that it's on right on the border of both counties. You're giving us the theatre, TJ. Do you have a favourite uh, Munster final moment from your own career or player or manager? Yeah, I probably do. And one probably one like this one, but from, from my personal one, was we were 10 points down in the Gaelic Grounds against Tip in 96. Uh, and we basically uh, dr- dragged it back to get a draw and then win the replay in Cork a- afterwards. But again, that particular time in 96, we had bounced out of beating Cork in Park and Kiev. The Kieran Carey magic point to be clear. Uh, in the semi-final and then be tip after a replay so as a championship that would be the one that sticks out in my mind 1996 and uh, did you celebrate after because Martin Bretney was riding in the Irish Independent during the week on an absence of fun in GAA and players not being able to be seen to let their hair down and celebrating success he was kind of comparing it to Jack Grealish Manchester City after the cup final is he right like you know you were both a player and a manager it, was it a case that everybody was like a monk for nine months until the championship was over or did it change from say the 90s to the last decade when you were managing what was the the feeling there I mean is it a case now tomorrow night if Limerick win they'll go for a few drinks if they want to Look, I can rest assured you, John, that whoever wins tomorrow's games, they will have plenty of fun and enjoyment. Like, like, it's huge to be able to win provincial titles. Like, there, there is a certain amount of what you're saying. Like back in the 90s, maybe we didn't, no, no, maybe about it, we didn't train and maybe push our bodies to the S&C limits that the guys are at. Now, these guys are in absolute peak condition and mind themselves in every part of their, let's say, maybe strength and conditioning, their fitness, their diet, and their recovery. Maybe recovery will be something that has changed over the years. We probably just maybe maybe just got up and rocked down with it, but there's a lot more to recovery now and rest. Like it, it has changed, but at the same time, I think if you ask any hurler back through the years, would they like to hurl in the modern era where the pace of the game is where it's at, where the intensity is where it's at? I think they would. Uh, I certainly would. Anyway, let's be able to still play it. If I could play tomorrow, sure. Wouldn't you just love it? So, like Look, I, I would say it's just the, the, the professionalism in the game right now maybe doesn't allow for as much maybe of that particular time. But I'm sure if you ask any of the Limerick boys over the last number of years, have they enjoyed it? Have they celebrated it? I would say it's a definite yes. What about the situation now of you're a management team, Owen Kelly? Uh, you- is there kind of rules around? No, you can't go out, you can't have a night out, or you can't eat certain foods, or all these kind of things. Or is it almost like the players just manage that themselves because they know if they do fall behind, they'll, it'll be they'll be exposed. Yeah, I think players are so smart now, John, that they just know when they need to be on. And to be honest with you, the structure of this championship they're on the whole time, and it's something I'd like to see. Maybe that they have a bit of downtime that they can relax and and chill out and that. And I think TJ mentioned it about the intensity and all that. Of course, you want to be involved in all that, but. I just find now from my experience like a hamstring before was maybe two weeks three weeks a hamstring niggle now is six weeks and for the condensed championship that they're involved in like you're missing maybe three games so you actually could miss the whole championship and that doesn't fit right for me because these guys put in an immaculate effort like from November on and it's all year round now the inter-county player now he's on all year round and that's why maybe you could revisit maybe a league game in, in January or in, in November, December, just to free up time. But look, we won't get into that conversation. But I, I just think the small bit of fun is just it has been taken away from it. Um, you know, I even think back to my own time, right? You play a match on, on a Sunday. You might have three or four weeks to the next game. And you, you meet the lads on a Monday for a couple of rings. And if, if the thing went wrong on you on a Sunday, be it a ball or a free or a penalty or whatever it might be, you'd be let know fairly quickly by, by the boys when you'd be having your first or second drink. And actually, the problem that you had in your head you were now actually chatting about it with the lads and it was nearly a psychology in itself like and you probably left okay you were getting the slagging and that but that problem was off your chest out of your mind you'd be back in Tuesday night then training with the lads and that so it's just it's so severe I think on the players um, it's a tough ask mentally 
mentally on them. You see physically how it can be the week after they, they, they play tough games, and especially against Limerick, because your physicality has to be uh, through the roof to match their, their intensity. No different than Ryan mentioned there on the typical Kenny Battles. I was involved in years ago, and you know all about those. So, look, it's um, it's a pity, but look for the 30 players on each squad, 35 or 6 players on each squad going to Limerick tomorrow and going to Croke Park tomorrow. They don't give a damn. They're in in what you where they're where you want to be in both provincial finals. And look, I'm sure they'll they'll enjoy themselves tomorrow evening, Monday, whatever, and then they'll be knuckling back down. But it's it is severe on players mentally and physically. I do think their current structure. Brian, was there a way of you all gathering together after a game, whether you win or lost, and just uh, let, like let it off a bit of steam and then regroup? Yeah, absolutely, John. Um, <clears throat> there was no such thing as. Uh, these annual drinking bans, which I could never understand, stopping lads for nine months, you know, it, 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 I, as far as I was concerned, it was counterproductive. And I, I'm not saying like drink was the answer, but but just that ability to have a kind of a a social outlet, like, even if it's a case of going out for dinner with a couple of lads, you know, uh, and, and, and the partners or whatever, and, you know, the rumours, all oh, they're out drinking or whatever, it just kind of carry on. But no, like we, we would have absolutely after, after matches. And uh, again, no one's kind of mentioned it. Like, I suppose we were fortunate in terms of like different, I suppose, groups I would have played with. There would have always been a kind of a leadership group there who would have kind of led the way. So, you know, you'd like on occasions you'd have maybe younger lads who would kind of might overstep the mark or whatever. But, you know, they, 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 you're, there was kind of almost an education within. You'd be looking at the, the senior lads and what, what was, when was this, when, when it was acceptable and what was acceptable, you know, in that terms. And yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I have fantastic memories, fantastic memories of, of, this time of the year when you're playing these matches because ultimately that's why you play the sports is to play these big games these provincial finals in front of big crowds and the intensity but also that kind of camaraderie that you have both on the field off the field and then afterwards just as Holmes meant the banter really the, the crack that if you have made a mistake or if someone got the better you, the, the, you wouldn't be long about being told about it and in, in, a, in a friendly kind of way and that but so yeah, I've, you know, having a, and it literally is, it might be just a few bottles in the hotel after the match, you know, and you're, generally speaking, you were so exhausted, you couldn't, you weren't able for much more anyway, you know, but it was, um, yeah, we were fortunate enough, we, we, we had, you know, plenty of opportunities to enjoy it, enjoy the big days as well, you know, it, it, it's serious, but it's, 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 to a large degree, it's, it's serious because you're, you're in, I suppose, a group with a similar fr- uh, minded players, si- similar minded individuals who are all at inter county level. Mo, you know, most players are very driven in terms of wanting to uh, wanting to suppose to maximise their time there, and uh, and it is it's a lifestyle choice as well. You know, to a large degree, like you look at any of the lads nowadays, like and you know the boys will be up and around the club, like and they they actually you know pull once the season is over, they you, you actually find they kind of get quite antsy in November, October, November because they're so used to being so fit and in peak condition that they actually while they get it out of their, their system for for a few weeks, but then they're actually tipping away themselves doing something because it's it's a lifestyle choice and, and that's you know it's it, that's what they know and love so it's um, it, it, there is an, it's important to get a balance I think there, it's multifaceted as well you know we're talking about the social side but, but I think we're, you also need to keep in mind like the just in terms of the, the mental toll in term, you know, of commuting up and down if you're based in Dublin and the wear and tear that has on someone you know not so much now at this time of year but earlier in the year you know, and, and and making sure there's there's supports in place for, for, for lads like that, you know, and being sensible about how you know, how they structure the trainings in terms of dragging lads down to the training, you know, three nights a week and maybe they could do stuff stuff um, you know, um, maybe where they're where they're living or where they're based. So but uh, no John we had, we had a great time. And you won a few All Irelands as well, TJ. Well, we won what, a few All Irelands. Yeah, yeah. What 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 is it like being a manager? Because you were in the last decade. Obviously, you played for Limerick in the nineties, but then you're a manager, and you got to remember to the All Ireland semi final against Kilkenny back in um, I think it's twenty fourteen, was it? Um, look, you must have that need to advise in the back of your head. What like what is John Kiley? Like how many things has he got to do tomorrow? Yeah, I, I, first of all, to answer your question, it's very tough to be a manager in, in, in the modern game. Um, Owen would be more in, in, in touch with the modern day stuff now than I would because it's a couple of years since I was there. But I think the first thing you've got to do is surround yourself with good people. Uh, you can't be an expert in all the areas, so maybe having the right people in the right places and letting them do their job. I think that's key. So from a coaching point of view, S&C, whether it's doctors, physio, selectors, or let's say even like even the team liaison officers now having the logistics all organised, huge roles and not for that I said it goes on behind the scenes so letting all the people getting on with their jobs is a huge kind of maybe 
maybe I said a facet of John's game that he's kind of brought to another level. He's just let everyone get on with their job. So very, very difficult. You want to have your finger on the pulse. You want to know everything that's going on. But letting people do their job, I think, is a skill in itself as well. Be the good delegator. I think so. It's huge because, as I said, you, 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 you can't be a master of all the trades. Like, but look, I would say as well, when things are going well and you're winning, I think maybe it's a little bit easier. You know, from a management point of view, you know, it's a results business. We all know that. And I think you're only as good as your last game. So there's a little bit more questions and things kind of maybe to kind of filter through. And maybe you start to question yourself a little bit more when you lose. Whereas when you win, it's like as if that kind of tide rises all the ships like and everything moves forward. So, yeah, it depends where you are, I suppose, in, 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 the, in the results business. So, TJ, what has this last few years done for Limerick as a, as a place? Because it's now, they're going, what, for five in a row. Cork haven't done that in 1986, the last county to do it. It must have completely, it's almost like a bit of, probably a bit of an Italian 90 for the county, is it? There is. Uh, for Limerick people all over the world, and I said in, in, in the county, it puts people in good form. Um, people are all kind of, just there's an always kind of a buzz about talking about the players and the team, and you're excited about the next game, and you're going kind of, like, I, I won't say with an expectation to win, but an expectation that you're going to perform and you're going to be very difficult to beat. That's what the lads have done over a long period of time. And, you know, like, I certainly wouldn't have touched on, the, let's say, the, the domination that this team would have, that has brought to the game over the last few years. I wouldn't have thought that that was possible for a while. You were always confident and hopeful that you can win monster titles and hopefully win an Ireland or two. But like what this team has done is incredible. And the Olympic people all over is that oh, the world are very proud of the team and very proud of I say what what it has done for the county. So yeah, long long may continue and hopefully we can win another one on Sunday or tomorrow. The margins getting tighter though. Do you feel? Do you feel that the, oh. the it's getting a bit more level now? Yeah, definitely. This month's championship will tell you that. You know, um, I, 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 I do think that maybe that the opposition has improved incredibly. Uh, they definitely come to terms with the team game, Limerick play. You know, they're playing to their strengths as well. I was really impressed with Clare when they beat Limerick the last day with their press and the way they were brave and they pushed up all over the field and, you know, didn't allow Limerick's game to get going. So it's it's, it's two-tier. Like there may be a, maybe a small narrative, John, that Limerick maybe have come back a little bit. I, I don't know. Like Limerick conceded 130 the last day, which you would say maybe is a negative, but they still won the game. You said, just concede 130 and win the game. Obviously, an awful lot of stuff has to be going right. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of things at play there. You know what I mean? There's going to be battles all over the field tomorrow, which you're kind of hoping that if you could win here and, and, and maybe win there, that it would, it would be key. But like I said to you, last year's Munster final was a classic. You know, the, the championship meeting in Ennis last year was very good. The championship meeting dish on the Gaelic grounds, atmosphere-wise, score-wise, there was very little between the teams all the way through. Clare won the opening quarter. The wide Sally was 13-12, you know, the big players on both teams. Shemi Fenning got two goals. Tony Kelly was on the, in the zone, he got four points. So there's a couple of factors as well around maybe Tony Kelly. Do, do Limerick make any little subtle change? I think they might do structure-wise. I don't see a man-marking role coming because what they've done over the last number of years has worked for them. So there will be certain things that we're going to look at in the game. Maybe one key battle for me might be that David Fitzgerald Kyle Hayes won he's been a good scorer from play for Clare he actually missed the first round of the championship this year which is the only game that they got beaten on and Kyle Hayes obviously is a huge player for Limerick so that battle I think might be won that could decide if, if, if we can get a kind of a, a hole on David Fitzgerald and get Kyle Hayes turning up the field and I'm sure Clare would say the opposite so like that, that's just one for me but I'm sure you could pick loads around the field uh, Owen Kelly um, your namesake Tony Kelly should he be man marked because it's not Limerick's way yeah, it's not Limerick's way, and I don't know. It'd be interesting to see, will they? I don't think they will. Um, but like, if you were an opposition manager, no, I'd be man marking him tomorrow morning. That's what I'd be doing. So to answer your question, he should be. But you know, he's scoring um, against Limerick over the last couple of se- seasons has been phenomenal. Like you know, six, seven, eight, nine points to play in, in some games, and you know, he he like not only will he ignite the team, he'll, he'll ignite the supporters as well, the clear supporters are, that that are in there. So, but you have to think of those little small things as well, and. You know, like, Limerick in Limerick, I have experienced it on the sidelines there in 2019 in the Munster final. When they get their nose ahead, it's unbelievable the way that crowd gets going inside in the Gaelic grounds. And I even remember back to watching the 13 Munster final, Limerick and Cork on the TV as well. And you just knew that day there was only going to be one winner. There was only going to be one winner. Like, it is an advantage to, to me, like, and I think Limerick will just, like the TJ said there, they'll, they'll just stick to the process. The way they play, they'll trust all their guys. The thing with Limerick, like, 
you know, if you're putting out a fire here and there, because other fires can ignite, and so that's what the supporters are hoping for, that the players are getting their small bit of rest and recovery. People are saying their energy levels are low, but when you see a bit of silverware up there in the stand and you want your Limerick green jersey going up to collect that, like, you'll get it out of you. Like, but look, there's two similar teams going toe-to-toe here. That's the that's the enthralling thing about it. Like, you know, both have class players on both sides. The physicality is the thing, and John Keenan done a great job for me last year in that monster final um, he added to the, the occasion and you know hopefully we, we'll see the same tomorrow because sometimes you know refs are probably blown when they maybe hear the crowd and like a referee doesn't have to blow the whistle you know if he feels that this is a good game you know once they're not head high tackles like they're both physical, a physical team so let, let them at it tomorrow When did you retire? It was about a decade ago was it Owen? 2014 but some lads tell me that I was stopped hurling about 10 years maybe before that. Yeah, that probably, before probably TJ Ryan and Brian Hogan are probably saying <laughs> <laughs> So, just in terms of scale, maybe talk to us about the scale even in the last... Obviously, like I always think that the ball is travelling further now and that maybe and maybe the boss is, is, is bigger than it was, but maybe because you're seeing it now, right, you're right on the coal face of, of the Munster Championship at the moment. Just even what's changed in the last 10 years in terms of skill. Uh, yeah, in st- level of skill, I suppose it's probably what has changed is the analysis and, and the data that the players are getting back. So if a cornerback gets the ball now, he's reluctant to hit that ball maybe 100 yards because 99% of the time that's a, a physical challenge at the other end. The ball spills and the next thing you might have a free man or he might have a half back back picking it up and now the opposition sets up the attack now. So that's not answering your question on skill. But what I find with the Clare team and the Limerick team, and there are two guys, two teams we're obviously talking about tomorrow. It's just that ping ball, 30 yard ball to hand that it sticks nine times out of 10. Um, we've done a lot of work with that with Eamon O'Shea when he came in in 08 or 9 and 10. Whereas the ball, ball to hand, ball to hand, I can nearly still remember him. I can nearly still hear it ringing in my head. Like, And I thought that worked for us when we were going well in 8, 9, and 10. So it's that 15, 20, 30 yard pass. Limerick made, made that stick. A lot of times, and I find with Clare, even looking at them through the World Championship, they're at that level as well. Like, so I'd say it's probably just constant ball to hand in, in training and repetition, I suppose is the word. Yeah. You're repeating what they're doing on the training pitch, bringing it to the matches. And I suppose it's having the, the confidence and being bold, I suppose, in, in pinging that pass when there's a defender on you that you say, No, I'll trust him. It's trust. It's trust. It's trust in that. We'll say, Keen Lynch, no, he's not starting tomorrow. He'll receive that ball, that Tom Morris will take that ball and that the defender is literally on him. And I think that's where Clare and Limerick are at a level with retaining possession. Um, yeah, the skill level. So I think the skill level is as high as it ever was, to be honest with you, John. You know, and it's it's great to see it. Conor Cleary, Brian Hogan, he's been named in the team. He had a bad enough arm injury against Cork. You wouldn't be naming him if he's not fit, would they? You don't know, John. You don't know the, the, the. You remember back to a former Clare manager and the yes, shenanigans that he used to get up to in naming teams and players and whatever else. I don't know with Lowen how he's approaching it, but I mean, Connor had a did have a, it looked like a bad injury. I mean, he's a he's a he's a really important player for Clare. He's a very you know he's a strong he's a strong man, and to go off with the injury, the arm was wrapped up in a jersey. It didn't look good. The worry I'd have is. You know, they don't... OK, well, they have a... David McInerney can go back there. McInerney doesn't, you know, I think it's on record, he doesn't particularly enjoy playing full-back. He's, he's found a new lease of life playing a wing-back. Um, and that kind of match-up, you know, I, I jotted down a couple of match-ups that I'll be watching. And, and that one between Conor Cleary and Galan would be huge. They've had a couple of... Um, how would you describe it? A couple of... Let's just say a couple of um, match-ups over the last couple of years... <laughs> And they know each other pretty well. And Connor is fairly familiar with Galan's um, ability to uh, to um, hold on to the hurl and whatever else. And they, they, you know, they, 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 I think both of them enjoy that 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 matchup. I think they both enjoy that that collision. So if Connor is carrying a knock and 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 it's a shoulder injury, which to 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 both the lads' points, this game is going to be a physical game. You know, this is not going to be, you know, kind of sizing each other up I'd imagine this is going to go from the minute the ball is in they're going to all let each other know they're there you don't want to be carrying well you don't want to be carrying any injury but in particular a shoulder injury um, and there's going to be quite a bit of wrestling and holding on inside in that square with Flanagan and Galan so if Connor is carrying an injury I'd expect you, you you know it'll be tested and you'll find out reasonably quickly how strong it is but you know I'll 
I certainly would be at the frame of mind, John, that if 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 you're not fit, you shouldn't be playing. You know, Munster final is no place to be going in parrying a knock. You know, from the outset, and uh, you can see with Limerick, you know, with Keane Lynch, the fact they don't feel maybe because of the injuries he's he's picked up that he's he's maybe a hundred percent. And you know, that would be it would be a slight concern for me. You know, in terms of you know the the strength and depth for Clare that it, are they, are they, are they being do they have do they feel they have to play the star Connor. Um, and as I said, you will find out, you know, I'm sure we'll find out in the first 15 minutes, you know, how he's, hopefully his shoulder is fine. Hopefully he's fit um, because I think, they, you know, he's a, he's a pivotal player for them. He's, he's locked down that kind of uh, the full back position for them over the last number of years. Last minute goals, one for Dublin against Cork in the All-Ireland Minor Football Quarterfinal sponsored by Electric Ireland. One eighteen for the Dubs, Cork 2-12 at Nolan Park. Kerry Kildare following that match. Derry Galway and Mayo Monaghan today as well. Shelburne 2, Wexford Youths nil in the Women's Premier Division. Jesse Stapleton and Hannah Healy with the goals at Talca Park. And the French Open Women's Final uh, is undergo- underway. We'll just bring you up to the speed in that in a moment. Um, Sviantek uh, 3, uh, love up against a Mukova in games, so she's well ahead. Had the poll um, was there like are you talking about uh, matchups there, Brian Hogan? Would be much chat during the game. Did you was there anybody like a centre forward that kind of uh, did your head in a uh, lot of back chat during a match, or was it just get your ball and clear it? Um, in terms of verbals, is it? And yeah, yeah, or just um, yeah. not really. Not, not really. I can't say there was there was. Um, uh, Lar would have always had a word for you as he's running by or whatever, you know. Um, but I, to be honest, he was usually to Zuji Jack. He was detailed to, to, to mark him. Um, no, most of the guys I would have come up against would have just been very much going about their business. I mean, I would have, I would have marked Bonner quite a few times, and Owen will testify. Bonner, you know, he's a quiet guy. Paul Murphy would know him well from the army. Um, a handful for sure, and you know, and a, and a great player. But but uh, you know, a quiet guy. There wouldn't have been too many verbals and. I suppose even going back to when I started, you know, I remember marking um, Ali Moore, and you know, and again, Ali was just just a, a pure hurler, you know, and a, strong as an ox in that. But no, nah, the game is so quick. <laughs> to be honest, you're trying to conserve any energy you have. So you know, if you're if you're if you're maybe out the field where I am, maybe more so back in the corner, you know, you might have lads a little bit more time to have 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 those chats. You know, um, I know I can remember. I suppose the obvious one I remember back is. Uh, is for Jackie and Tommy and and Lar and um, was it Pat Work or having a, a conversation there for 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 a period of a match? But no, no. Generally, John, particularly this time of year, to be honest, the matches uh, the, the pace is so high that you know if you're going around having a chat to a lad, you're you're clearly not focused on what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, and who's your um, most favourite opponent uh, in terms of a defender that was marking you a lot of the time? Sledging, John, I think is the word that's being used. Is that what you're, you're after? Yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. No, do you know something now? And I don't think you get too much of it at in the in the Ireland senior senior inter county championship. And that's a fact. I'm trying to think back there now. Like, like I never remember a day I'd say when I I came off the pitch and said, "Geez, that lad needs to wash out his mouth or whatever." Like, do you know what I mean? I, so you don't have time. You don't have time. And if it's anything, probably a, a, a defender or two might. You know, I wouldn't say say that in person, but you know, they'd have the scope because I think forwards have to concentrate on the ball because like it's coming so quick and fast and you have to be on your game and that so sometimes I have a pet hate when I see the referee going in and he giving a yellow card to the corner back and the corner forward like because usually the forwards don't start it now I know TJ <laughs> was a forward and reverted back to the back usually I think the forward doesn't start it anyway maybe the boys have a different opinion on that but no I look I've never came across it and even in those typical any battles that Brian has referenced there I don't think I ever came off or we were never chatting as a group after saying this, this that was saying this, this that was saying that. So, you know, I think lads are just so yeah. focused on themselves and the ball and look, they're going hard, they're going physical, but, you know, the sledging, as we call it, I, I've never even been involved in it much or, or came across it much, to be honest with you. Liam Gordon is the man in the middle tomorrow. Very important for him, the Galway native uh, referee in this game. And uh, I think, uh, as you, I, I would kind of agree with you that what you're trying to get at there, oh, and let it flow. Let it be a match that's not going to be, you know, just be, have common sense in terms of the application of the rules and, and allowing a bit of physicality. Uh, TJ, um, I suppose Claire kind of in the mould of Brian Lowen. You would have known Brian from the playing days. And I suppose they're building the momentum, that, but they need to kind of get over the line now and win a trophy. Yeah, he's done a huge job for the county. Um, they're really buoyed up. Let's say 
maybe under difficult circumstances at times over the last couple of years and some of that stuff was documented but he's definitely brought him out the other side their underage is absolutely flying it they had a fantastic win last week in the under 17 cracking team so maybe his influence over a lot of stuff going on maybe outside the pitch is, is, is kind of coming to the fore this particular team have been very competitive under Brian the same as he played um, there is a huge familiarity with the players I do, I, I do agree with you there but this team are definitely hurling for him. It's exactly what you want as a county. He's kind of seen as a real leader for them. And he has all his big players, what I feel, in the right positions and all playing at the top of their game. OK, we're going to get verdicts now very shortly. 5-3-1-6, hurling the greatest game, but the snobbery to change or expand never taken serious by the best counties. Leinster almost gone. If TJ Owen and Brian, all great players, but uh, if born in a lower tier county, no hope. What the solution? Join counties, but try something to expand this great game. So, look, I don't know uh, what the answers are. We're not going to solve them right now. But uh, thank you for your text on 53106. Brian Hogan, um, you've already put your colours in the mass with Kilkenny. Obviously, you're not going to da- waver from them for the Leinster final. But for the Munster final, what do you see the winning and losing of the game, the tactics? Uh, who's going to be out on top and why? Um, oh, there's, there's, there's nothing between these two teams, John. Um, you know, TJ's mentioned sort of the pitch is you know it's, it's on the border there's going to be a huge crowd from Clare travelling for it there was a point in it last year after extra time there was what was there um, a goal in it oh, sorry there was a goal in it after extra time last year and there was a point in it earlier on this year I I think it'll be the same I think um, it'll be a puck of a ball I, just looking at the, the two the two squads I, I, I'm just siding with Limerick purely because I think their squad is stronger um, and they're starting they're showing signs of starting to pick up form again you know Hegarty back in the team and as TJ has mentioned a big game player like that but the matchups they're 50-50 throughout the field they know each other so well but just you know you look at the bench you look at the potential of Keane Lynch and and you know you know Richie English and the brother coming off as well, coming on as well and, and one or two others you know Colin Boylan and I just think they have a little bit more to offer um, and then that might be enough just to get them over the line but very little between it you know and you know as a neutral um, I think you know Claire a little bit like Galway in that you know the silverware would do them more more good you know in terms of their development if they could get a monster title it'd be massive for them but you know look it'll be I, I'm just going to I'm going to go with Limerick um, just but just barely Oh and how do you see it? Yeah fancy Limerick John um, I probably think would you believe the home advantage and I I mentioned the roar of the crowd earlier on. I, I probably think they could get over this by you know, three, four, five points. Um, why do I think that? I just think they have that potential. And, you know, I just think they were a group that they seem to deliver on the big day. They've done it. All Ireland's league finals. When there's a trophy there to be won, like I think they just know that they're going through a golden era and they're not going to let up on, on anything. Um, you know, and the home advantage is an advantage. Keen Lynch, too, to come off the bench. Graham Mulcahy, you know, they have a couple of X factors like David Reedy is there in the subs too and probably hasn't hit maybe a bit of form that he was coming off the bench the last couple of seasons and that. Um, I just just think they'll they'll know what it was required, especially when it's at home. And even John Kiley has hinted like that it's at home that we don't want to to, to let anyone out of this uh, stadium in the Gaelic Grounds without the silverware only only Limerick. So they'll be very, very focused and look it's five in a row and you know if you were to call call it with this Limerick team they've been phenomenal and they probably deserve they have broken a couple of, broken a couple of records with scoring and that and it looks like they're going to maybe equal in my opinion I think they might equal Cork they will equal Cork's uh, five in a row record and for a squad and a management team that's unbelievable that's a phenomenal achievement and uh, I, I think they'll get there and they could have three or four or five points to spare yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, obviously, the tickets will be equal to, between both counties, but I do know what you're saying in terms of the Gaelic Grands as a, as a venue. And TJ Ryan, I'm sure the ritual is all planned for tomorrow. Is it, I'm, I'm, I can't, you, you must be going, are you? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Park and town, John, and walk, walk, walk out the Ennis Road with a kind of a big horde of Limerick fans. Yeah, the atmosphere will be building early. So, but yeah, the drive for five, as Owen said there, is huge for this particular team. As I said, they've been massive in the game. What they've done, as I said, from a Limerick point of view, is, hasn't been matched before. So I'd love to see the drive for five complete. The home venue is definitely a help, and we definitely won't want to see the McMackey Cup going over across the Shannon. Like, so that's huge from Limerick. I'm sure that, like I said, these guys will be aware of that. And as Owen said there, they're, they're, they're big game or let's say final record over the last number of years is phenomenal they'll know what they need to do here they're coming right at the right time the incremental improvements over the couple of games have been perfect 
beautiful rise to a Munster final and maybe just kind of put it right as well we got beat by Clare in their own Robin so a score to settle there or something that maybe will not have gone down well so yeah. our big players get things right drive on TJ Ryan Brian Hogan Owen Kelly thank you so much for your time here on Off The Ball Saturday News Talk enjoy the matches tomorrow speak soon thanks, thanks for that See you guys. See you guys. Bye, Leinster and Munster final preview there. And we're back after the break speaking to Gary Murphy on the whole sport of golf. Off the ball on News Talk. Future proof. If you're anything like me, when you look up into the night sky and see the